Allow me to explain the purpose of the title, ladies and gentlemen. The reason why we need to understand if New York is going to drop because we don't have one bias. We're not about one direction. We are about accepting that anything can happen in this game. In this channel, I ain't going to give you no false dreams. I ain't going to give you no false expectations. I'm going to tell you exactly what's going on in the chart for the way the price is moving as it is right now. Welcome to the Traders Reality Stream, ladies and gentlemen. I hope everyone is doing very well today. How are we? New York, baby. You know what time it is. You know how New York rolls. We've got to be patient with New York. We know that at any moment they can just roll out the stops and hit price lower, but they can also move it higher. We will never know because we just don't know what happens in the realm of uncertainty, ladies and gentlemen. How is everyone today? I hope everyone is doing very, very good. Good afternoon, PC Shed. Good afternoon, everyone around the world. Mad love and respect to everyone passing through. Today is the day of the hunt, okay? This is where we see the volatility coming into the marketplace. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday are the days where we see most of the action happening. If you ain't making money on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, why are you going to take your chances at the weekend when there's low liquidity and high volatility i can understand why people would trade the weekend you know it's just that time that you think you can actually mastermind the market but ladies and gentlemen you've got to be careful with these market makers they operate at the worst times and at the best times 
Okay? So, without further ado, let me get my stuff sorted out right here. Get myself ready for the zone. It's 2 o'clock, ladies and gentlemen. If you are new to the stream and to all my pattern watchers, welcome to the Traders Reality Show. My name is Tino. Let's roll out and have a conversation. Let's go with it, guys. So, Bitcoin, again. What's New York got in store for us? Okay. Well, first things first, guys, we need to understand something. What has happened before so that we can understand what are they likely to do next? Because moves develop. Okay. Moves develop. They need to move price higher in order for them to get it cheaper at the highest possible point. And that's why they do look to pull things back. All right. We had some very interesting activity below towards the 59 zone they built a beautiful w formation now if most of you are aware bitcoin has been doing this quite some time now it's been forming patterns from the highs coming down we're expecting cyclical behavior and they just fall into the w formation after the level two drop and then they make the move back up again which is what you see right here in the chart okay guys sound check is everything all good steve <laughs> Yeah, I haven't actually spoken to Steve this weekend, guys. Steve, you know, I'm not speaking to Steve. Put it like that. You know, Steve, I ain't happy with Steve. But let's just actually roll out and have a look at what's going on from with what happened in Asia. As you can see right now, we are currently in the brink session with the US. Okay. Asia last night kept the range very tight. Stayed within the previous high from the last Asian session. Asia marked price higher. They come back down, formed a small movement to the upside and brought it back down again. What, from my understanding, it looks like Asia initiated a stop hunt low, built some more longs below the key notable areas in preparation to move back up again. At the same time, we've tested the 50 EMA, which is this blue line right here. And we've got the 200 EMA as well. This is on the one hour time frame, guys. Now, if you are new to the stream and you want access to all of these platforms and these indicators, everything you need is in the description of this video. You can download IC Markets. It's free of charge. And then go to the Discord, which is pinned to the top of the chat. And you can download these indicators free as well. There's trading view editions of it as well. You can see we've got the trading view indicator right there as well. Okay, so take your pick, ladies and gentlemen. It's all there for you. All right. So. What can we expect? Well, first things first, we need to understand something, all right? If you remember, the Bitcoin futures gapped up, all right? We said over the weekend we we're expecting them to gap up in price because of Bitcoin's movement. They did just that yesterday. Now, today, because Bitcoin has dropped, we are expecting them to drop down lower. So there may be a gap down in price, okay? Because that's going to absorb all the pre-market orders coming into the chart, which we should see that gap down happening at about half past two, which is when the New York futures opens. Okay. Looking at Bitcoin's behavior, currently holding at around the 200 EMA. All right. Now we've got notable candlesticks appearing below the key 63,000 zone. That's important, guys, because we know that market makers build their longs below key notable areas, get their longs filled below the best area they can, and then they come out of that zone and fill with vector candles. They break out of that zone. But like I said, New York has to have its piece of the day. Okay, now this is the 15 minute time frame. If I roll onto the one hour time frame, you can see bright as day that they are testing around the 50 EMA. So could this be the pattern? Rise, retrace, continuation. Is this the first level drop from the W formation that formed over the weekend and coming from last Friday as well? All right. Looking across the board as well. This bad boy, I have to talk about it because as much as people don't like the idea of what's going on with Shiba coin, okay, with Shiba Inu, ultimately, you need to follow the money. Just look at what's going on with it. It's going up. Now, if it wasn't called Shib, all right, and it was called something else, would you still show the same interest? Or is it because Shiba actually has the same stigma that is attached to it like Doge? Well, they call it the Dogecoin killer. And based on how it's been performing, it's doing a bloody good job of making sure that it's preparing itself to actually kill Doge. All right. Regardless of the stigma behind this coin, whether it's a meme coin or not, the money is coming into it and you can exploit that. All right. Forget the naysayers. It's not about whether it's a meme coin, whether it's a Ponzi, whatever it is. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, the money's coming into it. If you can't exploit these movements 
whatever the history is with this coin, then you're not really taking trading for what it is. At the end of the day, our goal is to try and follow the market maker. Good morning, guys. Mad love to California. What's happening? What's happening? Thank you very much. A percent, exactly. A percent is a percent. Whether it's trading oxygen, grass, cement. If there was a market for those and I could trade it, I would trade it. All right? We've already got orange juice and coffee. So we're working our way towards water. I think you can actually trade water. But what I'm trying to say to you guys is this. Ignore what people say about whether it can go to one cent, ten cent, two cents. Who cares? Why can't you exploit movements from this area all the way up here? you got Robin Hood talking about this. you just got the backing of people. The money's coming in. Did Ethereum actually hit more... Vo Sorry, did Shiba actually hit the same amount of volume that traded as Ethereum? Is, is For a meme coin, are you serious? In its infantile stages? How long has Dogecoin been about? Before it actually made those sort of things. Shiba's only been around, what, this year? And the only interest that got me to Shiba coin was the fact that you could swap it. It had its own swap platform. You know? Trade what you see, ladies and gentlemen. Forget what it's called. At least there is some form of utility behind Shiba coin. And it's got a bit of a meme aspect to it, but who cares? Follow the money. All right? FTM. Absolute monster. All right? absolute monster on ftm i took a couple of scalps on this last night testing a few strategies and the strength in this coin is unbelievable absolutely unbelievable it's just not stopping you look at it on the daily time frame as well when is it going to stop and this is what i'm saying to you about cryptocurrency and trading overall the concept of irrational behavior it doesn't have a time scale to it okay it can just keep going in one direction until it decides to change and you have to be okay with that moment of change. You have to accept that, yes, it can keep going up. As much as you expect it to pull back and drop down, what if it doesn't? When it decides to do so, it will do so. And you have to be okay with that. Never fight the market. All right? If you see that it's rising and rising, take advantage. If it starts to break down, wait to determine if the move to the upside is going to continue. If it doesn't, you will know. Okay? <clears throat> Next on the list, West Solana. Um, who's got the best percentage change? Here we go. 20% Shiba. Man, that's crazy. Matic has actually smashed it. I can't believe Matic has done this. If you remember our projection with Matic, it's gone up. It's come up to this zone. Taken the Matic zone that we had beforehand. Gone to the $1.80. That is nuts. We've been following these coins for quite some time, guys. And they just keep on rising without hesitation. Okay, XRP seems to be doing really, really well. It's coming away from that zone, but it's still pulling back ever so slightly. Where's Ethereum? Where is our lady Ethereum? Okay, then. So we've got a giveaway soon with Ethereum. And I really want Ethereum to stay above the 4K zone so that when we do the actual giveaway for the Ethereum, two people are going to receive a share of one Ethereum. And that's anyone in the channel. I'm going to be rolling out a video so you can take part in it. And it's going to be done in two ways. We're going to be going onto Twitter and we're going to be doing it through the channel as well. So make sure that you are on both those platforms. All right. Everything you need is in the description of the video, guys. So don't worry. I'll be giving you the video to help you out on what you need to do to take part in that giveaway. All right. And that's going to be coming at the end of this month. OK. And we've also got three more page, four more people to give the Patreon access away free for three months. So four people are going to get that. So it's all systems go with this channel, man. It's only love. All mad love. Okay, what else have we got across the board that is actually doing well? Sushi looks like it's doing okay. Nice little pump by Sushi coming out of the zone. From my understanding, ladies and gentlemen, Bitcoin's pulling back and the alts are starting to move. But Bitcoin's pullback is not so strong. All right? It's just a standard move back. Let the alts make their move and potentially see price moving back up for Bitcoin later on. It has rejected its daily open quite a few times today. So we would naturally expect them to come back up and test that zone. But here is the clue, ladies and gentlemen. For every green vector candle that you see on this move to the upside, it's being recovered. Look at this green vector. They've moved out of the zone. They've pushed price back down. So market maker builds his shorts at the highest possible point. He induces the trader to step in long. He commits them to the upside. Whilst he's getting them committed to the upside, the retail trader is putting his liquidation points in this move on the way up. 
Market Maker hits those liquidation points and uses that liquidation to open up the shorts and open longs at the same time. So he realizes the return on his shorts and he builds longs at the same time. Happy days for the market maker. Is he going to actually move from this point to go back up? Now, we're seeing a little bit of spiky behavior by Bitcoin. I'm waiting for the open of New York. This is going to be a very interesting moment in the chart, guys. Is Bitcoin going to hold above the, the 800 EMA in the zone? Okay. All right. Can you look at sand? Um, have I got sand up here? Let's have a look. What's sand like? Sand doing okay. 80 cents. Not bad consistently rising spike retrace spike when you see these spikes up to the upside that's the market maker inducing traders to commit okay new orders are stepping into the chart so we may see one more pump up and then we may see a, a progressive move to the upside to keep the money that's been coming into the chart here and here because the idea of buying the dip is being installed in this chart all right so be mindful of that Bitcoin touching the one hour 50 EMA. That's correct. Bitcoin. Yes. Let's just actually go back to Bitcoin because that's what this is all about. Where are we are. Let me get the big three up. Okay. Here we go. All right. Bitcoin has just spiked. Spiked lower. On the five on the 800 EMA towards the 800 EMA. It's literally 15 minutes time, guys. We're going to know if New York, if the UK have actually built and prepared the session for the New York session because they're recovering all the vectors in this contained zone. All right. You've got the wick up here. All right. Very important because it was part of the vector candle. Many orders have been opened in this zone. They're going to want to come back and test those zones to get the same commitment because of the volatility of that zone. Let's see if they actually do do it. Look at this, man. They came all the way down and recovered the vector candle right here. All right. Let's see if they do actually decide to come away from this zone because it does look like they're trying to make a move right now. Gold 100 pimp dump earlier on. I do believe gold's movement, okay, was a setup. Okay. Gold had moved up to the upside and it's now setting up for the retrace. By New York, it should be moving back up to test the range daily high. I've just got a feeling gold is preparing for something. Dollar yen are the same token. Look at that. Stop hunt rise out of New York, shifting back down. I'm waiting for her to break down to come down into these zones, but she could also continue higher and take out this next pool of liquidity. I'm expecting this retrace. Been building positions with dollar yen. I'm waiting for her to drop down lower because her move to the upside is quite phenomenal. We do need to see a little bit of a reset. All right. BNB, we've got BNB on MT4 as well. So we'll have a look at BNB on here. You can see BNB has actually had a vector candle at the 50, but the 50 EMA is pretty flat. So there's not that much volatility in the chart. N naturally, we would expect a recovery of this vector candle right here. But it's all eyes on Bitcoin, ladies and gentlemen. The New York session brinks looks like it's forming at the lows right here. So this may be the low of New York. All right. So we've got to be aware of that. And let's see if they do decide to follow through and come away from this zone. Okay. Wonderful. What's John saying? Big warning. Sell Sheeb immediately. Sheeb is going to crush. Ah, oh, man. I hate it when people do that. Quickly pass through, throw a little bit of spam and chip. Well, they actually got blocked from here, but that's another story. Market is reaching some sort of local euphoria. Dump Wednesday coming, in my opinion, then a strong finish to the monthly candle. Maybe, Imran. Maybe. Okay. But the dump, the, the, the pump that came from the weekend, there's a reason why it come away from that point. All right. It's because they had absorbed enough liquidity to the downside. Now, the market maker, he can only take advantage of traders who are committed to trades. And traders in this zone were very committed. Everyone was like Bitcoin 59, 41, 50, whatever it was. Well, enough traders got committed in this zone. They came back and stayed within the previous peak in the chart where they last consolidated and spiked the chart, if you can see right here. Naturally, we are expecting them to hold this zone and move away, which is what they've done. This pullback is consistent. We need this pullback. Bitcoin is operating towards its highs, ladies and gentlemen. Now, if Bitcoin does stick with its cyclical move to the upside, all right? 
we're expecting Bitcoin to make a cyclical move to the upside. And I'm projecting that if Bitcoin does follow its cyclical movement, we should see the 70K zone. OK, because Bitcoin works on, on the average daily range. If Bitcoin moves 32,700 pips three times this week and it's to the upside, Bitcoin would have achieved a 98,000 pip move. And pip is the smallest change in price. And that will take us towards this zone right here. So it will be beyond 70,000. OK. So 70,000 or 72,000 if Bitcoin makes and continues its move to the upside from this zone at the same time we can also expect to see it moving down as well so be mindful of that notice how they are containing price in this zone it's holding the 50s hit it once hit it twice are they going to bounce away come back down test it another time or they're going to come and initiate some aggressive volume to the downside take out the vector candle around the psychological high that we drew look at that psychological high when they trade away from that point, nine times out of 10, they're going to keep trading away from it. All right. If they come back down, that could be the absolute point of support in the chart. If they do break down below this point and break below the psychological high, psychological low, we are likely to trade down lower. So let's see what they have in store for us, ladies and gentlemen. Like I said, New York session is going to effectively establish Asia's intentions and New York's continue. Sorry, US's uk's continuation so new york in essence is going to reset and even move price higher which would reset the intention of new york sorry uk and the asian session or it's going to continue further and prepare it for the asian session later on tonight so it's all down to what these guys have in store for us but you can see there's a vector candle right here that they started selling off at which was inducing traders to go short and the market maker was going long at the highest possible point but getting his orders filled cheaper in anticipation to move price back up again the next pool of liquidity in the chart is in and around this zone right here so this would be the absolute high for bitcoin all right so this is what i'm saying guys they're keeping it cheap is this buying the dip concept being played out we need to see what happens what do i say about the head and shoulders on the four hour time frame let's have a look at the head and shoulders on the four hour time frame guys okay head and shoulders on the four hour time frame what we need to understand is this the move from the top all the way back down to here was quite a steep move okay They've consolidated quite a bit in this zone. Now, if this head and shoulders plays out, before we can even consider it playing out, we need to see price breaking down below the 5 and the 13 EMA on the 4 hourly. And price needs to break and close below the 50 EMA before we can even consider this being a head and shoulders formation play. Naturally, when you draw it on the chart, you're going to see it. That makes sense. It's easy to do it. Look, one zone right there. You've got a zone up here. And then you've got the W. Well, this would be the right shoulder right here. All right. But look at the market structure itself. Where are we? Where have we come from? What's going on in crypto? What if this is just buying the dip? You see patterns within patterns, cycles within cycles. There was an M formation right here. We had the drop level one retrace, drop level two retrace. And then it went into a W formation at the same time. So is this resetting the move? This is what we're waiting to see, guys. All right. Remember, Bitcoin is pretty much the predominant coin that's going to reflect what everything else does. OK, like I said, Bitcoin is the fashionable coin. When Bitcoin, look at the fraction of disparity you've got when Bitcoin moves, Ethereum holds, XRP holds. When Bitcoin holds, Ethereum moves, XRP moves, altcoins move. When Bitcoin drops does ethereum hold or does it also drop as well or does it rise what i'm saying to you is is pay attention to the disparity between the bitcoin and the altcoins and ethereum of course and xrp the big three bitcoin xrp and ethereum all right focus on what's going on with bitcoin and you're going to understand where you are with the rest of the coins in the crypto space it's no different to when gold rises and dollar drops when gold is rising, it means that investors are seeking a safer option. When dollar drops, people are taking money out of risk on assets and putting it into um, risk, um, risk safe, sorry, hedging assets as such, which is what I understand Bitcoin to be as an ETF. You know, people have been using Bitcoin and the CME to hedge exposure on their portfolios. 
all right so when we see gold rising does it mean investors are seeking safer environments because they're uncertain about the economy by principle bitcoin should be rising in an unsafe environment because it's an opportunity for you to hedge any exposure that you have on your portfolios but it's really working out when to actually utilize bitcoin as a hedging instrument do you work it out when it's rising to the upside or when it's dropping who knows it's all down to everyone's preference on their trading and their portfolio management but at the same time we just need to understand the sessions this strategy ladies and gentlemen is a short-term day trading strategy and that's what you need to keep in mind if bitcoin bounces from this point right here it doesn't mean bitcoin's going to go all the way up to 75k no i'm looking at exploiting bitcoin from this zone all the way up to the next pool of liquidity where interest can come in again if that interest does come in is it going to continue price higher or is it going to create an influx of traders to sell off from that point is the market maker going to induce traders to sell at that point who knows and that's why i say to you it's important you focus on the candlesticks and where you are in the chart understand where they have come from to in order to work out where they're likely to go and the only way that we can work out where they're likely to go is based on their behavior of positions that have been built in the chart beforehand market maker goes long when price is dropping he goes short when price is rising all right there is a massive misconception about when price is rising, the bulls are in control, and when price is dropping, the bears are in control. Bull and bear are emotional triggers. When you see price rising, you automatically think the bulls are in control. You hold on to the idea that the bulls are in control. No, because you can only buy when someone sells, and you can only sell when someone buys. This is how the game of liquidity is transferred. The market's places are only places for money to move from the smart players, okay, Back to the dumb players, to the dumb players, to the smart players. That's all it is. All right. All we're doing is trading the idea of Bitcoin going from one point in price to the next. That is it. If Bitcoin goes from 62 all the way to 65, the only thing that does benefit Bitcoin is more liquidity is coming in and it's now at $65,000 a coin. That is it. Happy days to the holders of Bitcoin. Other than that, it's pretty boring. There's nothing else to it. Take Ethereum blockchain utility nfts everything all over the place marketplaces new economies of scale ethereum has a utility bitcoin doesn't it's just a fashionable coin bitcoin doesn't solve a problem okay but it introduces a new way of doing things it allows you to engage in another way of exchanging value that is it so here we are six more minutes until new york rolls out ladies and gentlemen we're going to drop down to a lower time frame just to get a little bit of action you can see a mini w formation forming in and around this zone okay will this mini w play out great for when you're looking to take a quick scalp all right you can see rsi outside the volatility band right there this is the tdi when price comes outside the volatility band and then goes back in and comes back down again there's divergence right there all right so we need to be aware that they may actually bring price back up and cross above the market signal line, market baseline right here. That's not financial advice. That's just me explaining to you the understanding of what to see when you're using this RSI. All right. So we're waiting and seeing right now. Here we go. We're getting a bit of activity. Recovery of the vector. Thing is, what you need to be aware of, guys, is if they do recover the vectors, once they are recovered, will it continue higher? Because they can just recover these vector candles, mark price up higher, and then start building more longs at the downside again. So we just need to be aware of what to expect from that point. How to speak again, you got 100 equals more listeners. Can't you do a shout out? Shame, I'm at Espresso House with full mega volume and my speaker connected. 100 plus more listeners. How you doing? Mad love to all you guys. Shyam. Thank you very much, my brother. Mad love and respect for doing that. <laughs> what happens when USDT crashes? We short it. That's what happens. If anything is crashing, you short it. If anything is rising, you buy it. As traders, you don't need to care about the fundamentals of what's going on. If there is an opportunity for you to capitalize on movement and volatility, you take it. Stop building a preference as to why you need to justify your entry. If you're down with your system, you will know that if it shows you an opportunity to go short, you'll take the short. If it shows you an opportunity to go long, you take the long. If it doesn't play out to your actual understanding and the trade doesn't go your way, close the trade, cut it, keep it cheap, start again. 
If the trade plays out in your favor, understand what you did correctly so that you can replicate that behavior again in the future. That's all you can do when it comes to trading. You know? <laughs> all right, M. Bitcoin solves a huge problem with the current monetary fiat system. Yes, I understand that. Okay, I understand that. But what I'm saying to you is Bitcoin, it's the it's the fashionable coin. All right. There are so many other coins out there that actually serve a purpose and solve good problems. And they ain't even priced at what they should be at. Bitcoin is just fashionable. That, that is why. And it was the first coin. That's why it's priced what it's priced at. Okay. Guys, we are in the adoptive stages of cryptocurrency. It's an exciting time. All right. We are in the adoptive stages. Three minutes until the start of New York, ladies and gentlemen. Got to keep an eye out for the um, for the New York. There we go. The ETF right there. I'm expecting a gap down. I'm hoping that a gap down occurs based on the way Bitcoin has moved. So we should see a little bit of a gap down in the chart, which would form a nice little W formation on the ETFs itself. But let's see if they actually do follow through with it. All right. Well, we got three more minutes until New York rolls out in the futures, ladies and gentlemen. Guys, listen, I'm, guys, I am not saying Bitcoin is a bad thing. All right. What I'm trying to help you understand is is in order to exploit opportunities that are presented, okay? Bitcoin is the leader. Bitcoin is the reason why people come to cryptocurrency. All right? I'm sorry if I actually <laughs> insulted the Bitcoin holders. Forgive me. But really, it doesn't matter. If we can trade it, we trade it. Whatever it is. Okay? Here we go. One more minute, ladies and gentlemen. All right, minute and 15 seconds until New York rolls out. Let's see what they've got in store for us. Will they hold this zone? Why is price containing in that area right there? What is going on right there? Here we go. A little bit of activity. Price behaving in and around the 62,500 zone. Here we go. Three pins to the low. Are they going to hit this zone three times or is the pin going to end up being higher? Let's see. Are we going to get the gap down? in the ETFs to close this gap and absorb in the actual price movement to the downside from the last few hours. Let's see what they've got for us. <laughs> Everyone's expecting the dump. No, not yet, Cretania. We haven't hit the, the jumper story just yet. No jumper story just yet. No one's been insulting cryptocurrency. No one's been denying the idea of the the market makers. I think everyone's established that is the market makers are present. Whip out the good old book map. I can't whip out the book map just yet. Not just yet. That's going to be for tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Let's have a, here we go. Here we go. New York. Ah, still one more minute. Come on. What time are we on? Hasn't it started just yet? Come on, where are we at? It's half past two. Let's roll. Let's roll. Have they gapped down yet? They haven't gapped down. That's a good sign. They haven't gapped down. They haven't closed the gap. Okay. New York is on its way. First few moments. Here we go. Why hasn't this been done? Is it open yet? Should be opened. Market open. Happy days. It didn't gap down. But they they may fill this gap. Oh, man. They may fill the gap, ladies and gentlemen. We may see a little bit of attraction to the downside. Here we go, here we go, 9.30 right now, here we go. They don't have to gap down immediately, right? This is what I'm saying, here we go. 
They're not gapping down. This is the test right now, guys. We're waiting to see what New York's going to do at this zone. Let's just bring up Ethereum. What's Ethereum doing? It's all down to what New York does. That's what it is. They're testing this zone right now. It's too quiet. I'm not seeing the activity that I want to see. It's pretty boring, if I'm honest with you. No activity. Price outside the volatility band? No, not even outside the volatility band. Still holding the 50 on the one hour time frame. Come on, Bitcoin. What you got for us? New York, what are you going to do? You're in the Brinks box of the New York session. Let's go. Fifteen minutes until I have to go and get the mini market maker. Here we go. We're getting some activity right now. Come on, New York. What have you got for us? Nice. Three hits to the low. Shift out. Come on. What have you got? What's moving? Let's have a look. Let's see if we've got any continuations. She was pulling back. 20% gay. I would expect it to pull back. What's Doge doing trying to climb up there? You stay where you are, man. Algo, $2, man. Happy days. There's a nice sharp pullback prepping for New York. Two more minutes until the next vector candle. Sorry, till this candle finishes. Is this the pre-sell off and then New York rolls out? Hold on a second. Still not breaking this zone. They're still holding this zone for a reason. As always, ladies and gentlemen, okay? When I finish the stream, that's when we'll probably get the move. I'll probably get on the phone to Steve and establish something with him. And he'll say to me, Tino, it's going to go up or it's going to go down. Take your pick. Yeah, cheers, Steve. I thought you were my inside guy. What's going on there? Inside. Here we go. Very interesting. Here we go. Three hits to the low. This is the New York Brinks play right now. So the New York Brinks session is the first hour and a half of trading, which you can see right here. All right. It's this box right here. Now, this box is is notorious for stop hunts. OK, and they normally set the precedence for the rest of the session. New York is going to show one of two things. It's going to show a reversal from the high or it's going to show the reversal from the low. It can do both. But one thing you will also need to be mindful of, ladies and gentlemen, when the UK session closes, now that means at half past five GMT, whatever happens from now up until this point, we will then see the New York session's intention to move price in its desired direction. Because right now, there is a plethora of liquidity coming into the charts. All right. Let's actually have a look at News Crypto to see exactly what's being discussed about cryptocurrency across the board this is cryptocraft.com the great american cryptocurrency opportunity due to china's anti-free market mentality the united states has an economic opening on financial technology and we need to seize it okay bank of spain opens registry for crypto service providers this company here is not biased this platform takes information from across the board all right look you've got pymits.com pragcap.com bankunderground.co.uk fx news live bitcoin news vox washington times has stepped up in here all right i own look elon musk on his crypto portfolio i only own bitcoin ether and dogecoin all right happy days ecp shun's visa mastercard paypal for digital euro advisory panel bigger comp this is what i'm saying about big companies okay they're either going to push politicians to make a decision okay because all these politicians are heavily invested in these companies. So they're going to have no choice. So, ladies and gentlemen, as I said, we are in the adoptive stages. All right. We are what we understand to be in the TV saga of crypto right now. When TV first came out, only a few people had TVs. Then when it became mainstream, no one bothered with radio. Now, the equivalent of radio now is podcasts. All right. So everything is all changing. People still have TVs. They're just bigger and smarter. That's where we are right now with cryptocurrency. People are starting to get used to the idea of it. Here we go. We've had the breakdown. Testing the 800 EMA. This is what we wanted to see with New York. 
Here we go. This is the test. This is the test. Where are they likely to go? I need to bring it up to a higher time frame just so we can get some range. Let me just get this off the chart. Have a look at where we could be going. Here we are. Recovery of the green vector candle. As long as Bitcoin stays within this zone right here, okay, we are safe. 62,175. It's a bit of a fast movement to the downside. So let's see if they play out. See that W formation? Failed because it was a smaller time frame. Expect that. All right. It's now holding this point. Eight more minutes until the next candle. So when you see a vector candle appearing like this, all right, and it becomes a vector candle, and there's still a little bit more time for the candle to develop and close, all right, we could see the battle between the market makers trying to grab longs at the lowest possible point. All right, this is the 15 minute time frame. So the next point of interest would be the 800 EMA in the chart. So we just need to be patient. This may be the stop hunt low, rise out of the zone. Let me just bring up Bitcoin on this chart right here. There we go. So we are now waiting for the final moment of the Brinks to finalize. That will be done at three o'clock, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see what they do right now. Who's actually performing still? Let's see. Everything looks like it's pulling back right now. This is New York dump behavior. This is what we get from New York, ladies and gentlemen. New York is kind to us sometimes. Sometimes they make a continuation and follow through with the move or they initiate a stop hunt low and a rise up to the upside. Yeah. Bookworm wants to eat 62k. I bet Bookworm, you chump. <laughs> bookworm. As if you made me say bookworm, bro. What's wrong with you, man? <laughs> oh, my days. All right, then, look. This has triggered a lot of traders to go short. Great time for the market maker to absorb liquidity. Now, traders that are going short are setting liquidation points. All right? Let's have a look at something. Um, no, I'm not going to bring it up. Because it's going to. I should have done it earlier on. But I just want us to focus exclusively on these candlesticks right here. Wait there. Let me just get something up for you guys. Just so we can understand about the liquidation points in the chart. Let's have a look. This will justify the actual market maker's behavior right here. So sit tight. I've got something for you. Okay then. Where you at? Bitcoin wonderful okay then check this out so right in front of us we do have the good old exo charts okay exo charts itself is showing me some very interesting behavior let me roll out onto the tick chart roll up the 2600 ticks because that's what the vector candles are made up of they're made up of tick charts all you're seeing is liquidations getting eaten alive look at all these shorts coming in okay all these shorts are coming in right now. Bitcoin, sorry, the market makers have absorbed all the liquidation points for the guys who've been going long. They're hitting their points, building their longs, releasing the shorts from the previous move to the upside. Now we should be expecting price to return back up, okay? If it does return back up, it'll be coming to the point, ideally the previous day's point of control will be the next point of interest for me, all right? Because they've actually hit the liquidation zones. And if you notice, the delta is showing a lot of sales coming in. But I understand it to be the market maker going long. So there is a lot of pressure from the market maker to push price down lower so we can get his longs filled at the lowest possible point. Look at this, 55%, 56 and 60%. That's a lot. What I'm waiting for Bitcoin to do now is to initiate a positive delta, which will be the market maker trying to hold the zone and come away and trigger all the liquidation points for the market for the sorry hit all the liquidation points for the shorts that have come in on this move to the downside because liquidation points is just free money to the market maker to realize the return on his longs on the way back up okay so it's just a little bit of a different viewpoint on exo charts based on how i've been understanding exo charts all right okay then let's have a look the candlestick look at it it's not finalizing just yet it's gone back up again. It's triggered all the shorts and the downside on the break of the 200 EMA. Because look, the comments in the chat itself. Guys are waiting for the 61. They're waiting for this, waiting for that. Bags of orders at 62. Infinex, you've seen it. They hit the, the, the limit buys at that zone and snapped it back up because there is a lot of interest in this area right here. 
So if you do look at that, you'll see it for yourself. Now we will know if this candle is going to hold as a stopping volume candle. All right, so in three minutes time, we will know if we're going to see a retrace back up. Is this the stop hunt low for New York? Continuation to the upside. We will only know once they actually reveal themselves to do so. Okay, as you can see right now, exo charts yet again, look market makers pushing now and hitting the liquidation points for the previous longs that were in the sorry the previous shorts that came into the move to the downside now they're going to start tapping their liquidation points we should start seeing the delta increase and get heavy at least above 30 40 percent 40 percent at minimum and exchange a lot of volume in that zone so it's not coming in just yet they may not be finished delta's going quick so it's not just finished just yet they may come back down just a little bit more, but they're going to tap liquidation points right now. As you can see, these little dots. I want the delta to finish positive like this to give me a reason to believe that they're going to push higher. So they may not be finished with this move to the downside just yet. So let's see what they actually do decide to do. Let's bring this up here. And let's keep an eye out on that. The tick chart is what the vectors are. The vectors are made up of changes in price. Okay, so in the 15 minutes, you've seen that volume was above average. So price exchanged hands at a high frequency. Okay, the violet candle tells you that volume exchanged hands and it started to rise. At the same time, could it be another reason that things are starting to slow down? All right, so we've got to be aware of that. All right, just keep an eye on the chart. It's how things develop. That's the critical thing. You're looking for things to develop. Why is it they've spiked the 200 EMA and triggered all the orders at the downside to pull it all the way back up to hit the liquidations? Because liquidation points, ladies and gentlemen, when you place an order with a brokerage firm, okay, whether you use leverage or not, you are pulling, you are putting up money on the table. Take the idea of leverage. If you use 100x, you're putting up a certain amount of money. Then you want to start putting in your liquidations and say, look, I want to make sure that my position is safe. So I'm going to start adding more margin to the chart so that my liquidation point doesn't get hit so soon. OK, well, when you put money into that margin, it's the dead money that you are effectively advertising to the market maker in the form of an order in the order book. Which is why you see these wicks to the downside and wicks to the upside. They are tapping people's orders right here. Look, someone went long up here and some people went short. But the reason why there were more people going long is because the market maker induces the trader to rise, get into the price. Because look, guess what? Bitcoin is making an all-time high. All right? It's trying to aim for the all-time high. So it's naturally going to encourage people to step in. The stalling of this actual tick chart right here right this is really important because if this actual candle right here finishes actually it's not going to finish so we're not going to see divergence in it if it okay hold on if it finishes positive and the delta is negative we've got divergence in the chart if you actively look at the cvd itself and activate the divergence you'll see there's divergence right there so that is a good sign here we go breaking out look at that just about to finish before the new 15 minute candle if they don't wick down and recover some of this vector OK, they may make the initiation to the continue to continue back up in the chart. Weekly point of control is where I would ideally want to be if things are going to be looking safe to a continuation to the upside. But we need to look the weekly point of control is sat at the previous day's point of control, of course, because yesterday opens as a start of the week. So, OK, the so monthly open is in sight there. All right, then here we go. As you can see right there, look. They've recovered that zone. Is this going to act as stopping volume? Price is going to come up. Delta still hasn't shown good strength to lock in this move to the upside. They're slowly trying to take these liquidations of these shorts. They may come back down just to give them that belief it's going to come in again. So you've got to be careful. This zone is an accumulation zone, guys. So be aware. Be aware. I will be making a video on that. Yeah, there are bots. The reason why there are bots is because trading in cryptocurrency is not regulated. OK, it's a term called spoofing where they can throw orders into the chart to induce people to try and take those orders and trigger other people's orders to come in and then taking them out again. All right. It's called spoofing. 
Tino, I'm having issues re newbie having newbie issues reading Ada correctly. I'm trying to tag on my notes what zones need to be achieved for all time higher. Educate me a bit. Well, the first education right there is it doesn't have to take an all time high. We would like it to take an all time high, but we need to accept that anything can happen. Bitcoin may not actually make another all time high. We have to put that in our minds. Because if you are blinded by the idea of it, it has to make an all-time high because there is a hundred YouTube thumbnails that say Bitcoin 100k, Bitcoin 200k, Bitcoin all-time high. Don't make your judgments on that basis. Please don't. Because then you'll be fixated with the bias of direction. And that means you're going to be holding on to losing trades. When will you cut the trade? Just because everyone's talking about Bitcoin going higher, does it mean it needs to go higher? No. Bitcoin will go higher when the market maker is ready to fulfill that obligation. Because you can only buy when someone sells. If no one's going to sell to you, and when price is rising, price ain't going to rise. If there's pools of liquidity that they need to come back to, then when they come back to them, we will start to know that. But if they don't, you have to be okay with that. All right? When you're trying to work out what aid is doing, see, look, they've recovered the wick. Is this another opportunity for them to spike down lower? Are they now inducing traders to stay committed to the short side? Because they can see that there's tons of liquidity down here that they can tap to get their longs filled at the lowest possible point. And once they've achieved enough commitment by the retail trader to keep his money committed in this zone, that is when we will see the reversal. And the reversal will appear really fast. Thank you very much, my friend. Neo, go back <laughs> <laughs> do market makers work in conjunction with each other binance coinbase binance is not a market maker coinbase isn't a market maker binance and coinbase are platforms for market makers to provide their services to at the same time you get charged the commission or a fee to make an order because binance brings the traffic to the market maker the market maker fulfills the obligation of that traffic by providing liquidity for your order so you can take advantage of a short or a long all right that's the basis of it all, ladies and gentlemen. New York still tapping the zone. See, we've got the wick all the way down here. Okay, so we've still got freedom of this range right here. So sit tight. Yes, I'm going to make a video on that. I'm going to be doing all of that stuff. So who is the market maker? Liquidity providers. Okay. Well, here's an example here, right? Okay, I'll bring it up for you one more time. Okay. How many of you have heard of TradeStation? I'm guessing you all have heard of TradeStation. Now, TradeStation is a renowned broker in the US. Okay, and they're now starting to provide cryptocurrency. All right, so you can now trade cryptocurrency. Now, the great thing about TradeStation is this, guys. On their website, okay, they talk about OTC desks. So what type of exchanges are you connected to? They're connected to OTC desks. So an OTC is over the trades, over trades counter, all right? Market makers and other electronic liquidity pools. As an individual crypto trader, it's typically, typically hard for you to form relationships with the OTC desks and market makers as they require large trade size, okay? You couldn't contact a market maker unless you spoke to Steve, okay? You couldn't say to him, I'd like to um, purchase, I would like you to sell to me um, a thousand Bitcoin orders, okay, or contracts on Binance. It just wouldn't happen, all right? You'd need to bring volume. Big Binance brings volumes to the market maker because for every trade that you place in the marketplace in Binance, Binance pings that order over to the ECN as such, okay, which is an electronic central network where the market makers pump the order back to Binance. Binance charges you a fee. Now you've got liquidity matched against your trade. Okay. You've got liquidity matched against your trade. And the reason being is because when you want to realize a return on your investment, if you've earned $100 on your trade, when you close the trade, where's the money going to come from? It's not going to come from a retail trader. No, it's going to come from the position that has been set up against you because when you close your position at a loss, the market maker buys it back. Why? Because in order to sell, someone has to buy. In order to buy, someone has to sell. And that's the mechanics of the movement of price. 
There are many concepts out there, many schools of thought about supply and demand. The only true story of supply and demand is the story of green jumpers, which I will tell you tonight. If you are new to the stream, ladies and gentlemen, be sure to like and subscribe. I'll be streaming again this evening to catch up on what New York has done. And we will be talking about the green jumper story. To all my pattern watchers that have been with me for a long time, you know what story that is. So be my guest if you want to pass through and listen to that story. But I know you've heard it many a times. But it's designed to help you understand the relationship between why price rises and why price falls. And it's not the way you think it is. All right. Mad love and respect to all of you guys for passing through. Make sure you're liking up the stream, the stream, the stream. Make sure you like the stream. 1,200 of you sat in this room. Show some love. And I will catch up with you guys later on. Be sure to hit us up in the Discord, guys. Mad love and respect to all of you. And I'll catch up with you later on tonight. Stay safe, guys. Peace.